Hello, hello everybody. It is Jackie from Pocket of Free School. And tonight we are going to talk all about the pumpkin jack experiment that I know a lot of you have tried or maybe want to try in your classroom. Talking about some pumpkin science. I got all the pumpkins right here. So we're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through tonight the pumpkin jack experiment and give you some fun ideas for you to explore pumpkins in the science center, whether you do it for a pumpkin theme or a fall theme or Halloween. So wherever the links are, <laughs> wherever you're watching, um, there is a link to the pumpkin jack blog post and that has a huge freebie in it. So let me show you what that is. But first, you're probably gonna need the book Pumpkin Jack um, or if you can't get it, which sometimes it's hard to get, check it out from the library. Or um, I think um, usually it's on like YouTube and somebody's reading it. You can watch. If you don't want to listen to them reading, you can always mute it and you can read it out loud with your students. Um, so Pumpkin Jack book. It's basically the pumpkin and they throw it outside and it decomposes all winter and then it grows the pumpkin patch. So, oh, sorry. The beginning Jack. There we go, throws a jack liner outside and then decomposes. So it's a really fun, fun, awesome book. One of my favorites has been for a very long time. So you're gonna need that book. But let me tell you about the freebie that's included. So you get two labels. So one, you, okay, I will talk about this jar in a minute. Um, but one, you can put it on your jar, like on the top if you want, after you um, put the pumpkin in and you're experimenting, you can put it on the top, on the bottom, wherever you want. And then there is another long label again, if you wanna put this by it too, you can. But you were gonna to wanna to take photos of your pumpkin jack during different stages. So you have a couple options to do that and chart the data so your students can record um, and observe the changes because you know, students don't, our, our little learners do not no, um, don't have the best sense of time. So we're gonna help them with that. So we're gonna make a giant chart and all you do is um, take the large label and stick it on top of this, um, the, hold on, let me stick it on. Literally just tape it to the top. And I would use this one um, if I was using one in my classroom because you can make this one as big as you want. There's no kind of end. So if it changes a little bit and they wanna take a picture and you can post it, cause look, all you're gonna do is literally take this page, print another one of those, and then you can put it at the bottom. So literally you're just gonna tape another one on. So that way if it, again, if it changes a whole bunch, you can take a bunch of photos. You're not like tied down to a certain number. And I think these are probably about like a, a um, one sixth of a page. So. It should be big enough to kind of see to um, the changes in the photographs. Now there's also in the freebie, there is one that's four. Now, if you wanna make this one bigger, print this page again, and then literally just take these four, four squares and tape it to the bottom and you can make it longer that way. There's also one that has six and there's also one that has nine. If you just want it to be like a single page next to your pumpkin jack. Now there are also um, student pages as well. Like that one's gonna be for the class. There is this page. So four different times, you can have your student um, draw what they see. You're literally gonna take this, put this in the middle of the table. Um, you can take um, the label off of your jar and we'll talk about the jars in a minute. Um, but four different times, you can have them draw what they see and you can walk them through that. Or I have one that has six. Now, if you do this one and you're like, oh, we wanna keep drawing, we wanna keep observing um, during small group or maybe table time, print another one of these, um, staple it to the back and it kind of becomes their pumpkin jack journal. Or this one's um, a little bit simpler. Um, they draw what the jar looks like after you do the um, put the pumpkin jack in your jar and then they predict what it's going to look like in a couple months. And they're gonna obviously say there's a pumpkin plant in there, right? <laughs> but we'll, I'm gonna tell you about how, how you can make that happen. I'll give you all my tricks. So there's a whole bunch of student pages too. Again, you do what works for you. If you have three-year-olds, it's going to be mostly scribbles and that's okay. Scribbling is the first stage of 
writing and drawing. We need that stage, it's important. So if you have three-year-olds, still try it out. If you have kindergarten, they can like label maybe in this little box or you can have them write, they can practice writing the date so you can sneak in a little bit more writing there. Again, do it to um, like kind of um, make it work for your classroom and your students age and their development and all the things. So you pick what works for you. So there's all those. And all of this again is a freebie. Just put your um, email in at the bottom of the blog post and um, we will send it, to, this freebie straight to your email. Super, super simple. Um, and it also in that blog post has super detailed directions. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I have never done the actual container one before. Um, I'll tell you what I what I have done with my class before, um, but um, we, um, in, um, me and um, Abby, last year when we made the blog post, we um, interviewed and we asked the people who had their pumpkin jack experiment work to where they got like literally pumpkins um, the next fall. We asked them what they did, how they did it. We surveyed a whole bunch of people and we collected it all. So kind of all the best tips and tricks there, right? And I am gonna try it this year too. So first thing you're gonna need is a jar, a pumpkin, and you can see my problem here. <laughs> um, so a lot of people use the pumpkin pie pumpkins um, some people do use the little ones. Some people have had success doing using the small ones, but most people that have had success use this big one. Now, I, you know, my kids love cheese balls because this is what I store all my sensory materials in. Um, so if you go to the farm store or a farm and home store or wherever you buy your pumpkin, measure it and then go to the grocery store or Sam's, Costco, Find a food that you eat. This is this is my my cheat way to get a jar for free. Find a food that you eat that has an opening big enough. Clearly, I failed, <laughs> but I will get one. Like you know, like those trail mixes um, that have like pretzels or maybe like the pretzels. They're um, the mouths are wider on those. So find a so find something you already eat. Nothing you're gonna have to buy extra that will fit your pumpkin. But I'm gonna walk you through it tonight, and we're gonna try it with a little pumpkin. And I'm actually gonna try it out. And that way, um, I'll tell you how it goes at the, you know, all, all throughout the year. I'm going to try out a little orange pumpkin. I'm also going to try a white pumpkin. And I, some teachers have tried white pumpkins and they've worked. Um, they've had pumpkin plants at the end of the year. And some people use pumpkin pie pumpkins. But again, people have had success using all these kinds of pumpkins. But um, you do what works for you or what really what you have on hand, right? So you're also gonna need, you're gonna need this cleaned out and you're gonna need some dirt. So what you're gonna have your students do is we don't wanna just open the pumpkin and put it in the jar. We want students to open the pumpkin and explore it. So during small group or, you know, maybe center time, depending on when you do it, you're going to talk about the pumpkin. Maybe you're going to talk about all the parts of a pumpkin. This is in my pumpkin science unit. Um, maybe you're gonna have this out and you're gonna talk about what is the what does the outside look like and how does it feel? And then they can predict what's gonna be on the inside. Now this is a pumpkin knife from one of those like pumpkin carving kits. I found that this works the best it's the one with like the metal blade on it. It seems to cut pretty easy. And it, um, I also don't like having a really big blade in the classroom. Obviously I'm not gonna leave this down for students use. This is a teacher part. And then you can pull it out and they can, you can put it down and you can touch it and they can explore it. And then you're gonna make a face on it, right? But you're gonna leave all this on the inside because we want students Right? We want the students to use tools to get all of that out. We wanna leave that for them to explore. We're just gonna be the ones who are making the face. And then you're gonna put it out like you always do every year for open exploration with all the tools 
because if their little, little hands get on it, it is no big deal. All that bacteria will just hopefully breed, breed and help with that um, decomposition. Now I'm gonna pretend that I already did the mouth. So you'll have this out, obviously put that away. Um, have this out on a desk and let the students get all the seeds out. And some students are gonna wanna touch it, some are not. Um, where's my baggie? My um, trick to use maybe buy a couple pumpkins, couple different ones. I usually would open, I'm not teaching this year, but I would open a little pumpkin, like a medium pumpkin. Okay, this one's heavy. And I would open a large pumpkin. I usually wouldn't do it the same day. Let me put this down here. It's a big one. I wouldn't do it on the same day because this will get gross, right? Um, it'll get kind of gross and nasty. But what I, you want them, they can explore it, they can touch it. You, in the science unit, there is um, an anchor chart. Oh, I can't. I'm gonna have pumpkin in my hair after this. Um, there is like a science chart and I'll show you after my hands are not gooey where you can take all the seeds out and you can count the seeds. You can do all of that doing the pumpkin jack experiment. So you do what you normally do with the pumpkin where you explore it, you notice all the parts, you have it out in the center. Um, also, again, I would usually have a couple out, maybe put them on different trays. These are from Ikea because I know you're gonna ask. Um, Keep the guts of one pumpkin for your pumpkin jack. And I typically put the pumpkin guts, we're gonna pretend like they're all in here. I typically put the pumpkin guts in a baggie, pretend like this is full. Um, and I would put it in my science center, all the strands and the pulp and all, all the, well I guess there's not really pulp because that's, the pulp is this part, but there might be a little bit of pulp, especially if you would put like some of these. Ooh, that would be really fun. Take the part that you cut. Okay, it's stuck to me. <laughs> Take this part, the eyes and nose and all that that you cut up. Um, put that in another baggie because I, um, what I typically do is I print out the vocabulary cards smaller. Like this one says seeds and like I have some clean seeds on a little plate. They're clean, they're dry, they're good. They're not gonna mold. <laughs> um, on a little plate for them to explore, you could put this, um, all of the, um, the uh, oh my gosh, the strands in another bag. And then, I don't, again, my hands are a little gross right now, but take that um, vocabulary word with the, with the um, real photo. It's literally, where's that? It's this one, but smaller. Just print it smaller, like um, print it four to a page or something. Tape it to the side because this, and then tape the top shut with some big, thick scotch tape or pur um, purple, <laughs> orange duct tape, whatever you got. So that way they don't open it. But this will usually, I noticed it would keep for probably about a week and a half before it would kind of grow or get nasty. So, but that way, um, if you're putting the strands in here, the kids who don't wanna touch this, or they don't want to stick their hand in there or think this is gushy and gross or it's a very uncomfortable feeling for them. Again, we don't want to make anyone touch anything they don't want to touch. So put it in a baggie so that way they can touch and explore it um, while it's in the baggie. So that way they can at least feel the texture and kind of the consistency because you can still kind of feel it in the bag. And again, you would just put this on your table and then you could take the chunks that you cut out um, and if you throw one of the pumpkins away, you could even like cut like some of this up and put that in a baggie and then put the pulp vocabulary word on there and put that on there. Okay. And the kids who don't want to touch all the gross will touch all of that. Now, um, also laminate all your pages to all the things because like this, I already got pumpkin on it. And I'm an adult and I didn't even get, get that messy yet. <laughs> so laminate all of your part, all of your pumpkin science <laughs> materials. Okay. Oh, let me show you. I'll show, I'll show you that at the end. Take it back. Okay. So let's pretend they played with this. I cut a mouth out, all the things. What you're going to want to do now is take your container and you're going to want to put some dirt in there. Now, I have, I just, um, I have some miracle Grow. Now, if you have miracle Grow or any kind of dirt, probably from 
any kind of garden store. There is probably fertilizer or something in here. So make sure the kids are not the ones touching the dirt unless you literally went outside and dug from the outside and put it in. So you're gonna put dirt in. Okay, this dirt is a little bit dried out. Oh gosh, that's a lot of dirt. It's fine. So, oh. <laughs> so that dirt, you can tell it's a little bit dried out. So you would wanna, oh gosh, <laughs> it's like dust. I'm allergic to dust. Okay, hold on. All right, okay. So my dirt is a little bit dry. So you're gonna want it to just be moist. You don't want there to be like water puddles or anything in there. Okay. And you know what? I forgot because that doesn't work. You could always, I guess, cut this. If you only had this size, you could cut it and then um, seal it back up. But we're just going to do this for... Okay, these are hard to cut open. Oh my. Let's try another one. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've never not been able to cut and do a little pumpkin. These are hard as a wrap. Hold on, let me get another knife. Okay. This is all of my pumpkin stuff that I keep. <laughs> all my different. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that's not gonna work. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to, oh my gosh, I can't. Okay, we are going to pretend <laughs> the things are not going as planned, but that's okay. So what I would do is I would either cut the jar. Obviously, I this knife isn't gonna cut it. Get a sharp knife, not, away, not around children. Cut it so that way you can put it back on if this is your jar. We're gonna pretend like this is cut with jack-o'-lantern, okay? Let's so put that in there. You're also gonna wanna put all the guts back inside the pumpkin, like in it, okay? Cause that's the part, the seeds and the guts, that's the part that's gonna make you grow a pumpkin. Um, some teachers did tell me they do put a couple, like kind of around or underneath, but um, put them back inside of your pumpkin. So like in there. And then again, if your dirt is super, super dry, make it a little bit moist. We want it to be kind of like a greenhouse, right? So the seeds will kind of germinate and um, do all the things. So we'll, we'll eventually sprout. And you're gonna put a lid on and you're gonna tape it shut because it is going to mold. It is going to be gross because it's decomposing. But it'll be so cool because your kids will be able to watch it from the outside. So if this is day one, you're gonna take a picture of it wherever you have it in your classroom. Um, a lot of teachers are saying to put it in the sunlight. If you have a little bit of sunlight in your classroom, if not, put it in the classroom and hope for the best, right? Um, um, Sarah just said in the comments that Sam's Club has cheese ball containers that have a bigger opening, so try, try those. Okay. Um, so you're going to take this and then what you're going to do is you're going to take your picture. Okay. Laminate this because I just got pumpkin seed on it. <laughs> and this will be day one. So that'll be your day one. That'll be your starting, what it looks like. And then have the students put this in the middle of the table. Give one of the student pages to each of your students and talk about what does it look like? Okay. We have it. You're going to need to draw the jar. And you do one too, because we want to model how to use what we're looking at, observe, and then draw draw our conclusions, right? Draw what we observe. Um, so you're gonna say, okay, we, we need to draw the jar. Oh, what do you see in the jar? Oh, there's dirt. And then put dirt, like draw the dirt in there and say, okay, what, what, what else is in there? Oh, our pumpkin. What does our pumpkin look like? Oh, it, it looks just like a jack-o'-lantern. It, it's round and it has two eyes and a nose and a mouth. And you can talk about how those, those are triangles. Again, if they're scribbling, it's just going to be scribbles, but that's okay. It's just as meaningful. They are still scientists and they still, um, can draw and draw their scribble, um, observations. Again, if it's kindergarten, they can label. So they're gonna draw their circle pumpkin and oh, it has the stem on there. Um, 
and you can put how, you know, there's, um, do you see anything like mine has dirt on it? You would obviously water down your dirt a little bit. So do you say, is, are there anything on the, on the sides of the jar? And you, they would say, no, you know, we don't see anything because what's going to happen is condensation will, will, um, so there'll be like, um, little condensation on the inside later and it'll mold or all the things. So that way they know to start noticing the, the what the sides look like and say, is there anything else we need to draw? Has it changed at all yet? Nope, it's just like when we put it in there. So they will draw it. And then what's gonna happen is, is every morning they're gonna come in and go, oh my gosh, has one good act changed? And it's gonna take a minute for it to change, but once it does, they're gonna be so excited. As they're excited, put this in the middle of the table, give everybody their paper back, you have one too. And you're gonna say, okay, we need to draw the jar. What else do we need to draw? The dirt. Okay, the dirt's still in there. Did the dirt change? No. Yes. You know, is there white stuff on the dirt? Um, have them explain to you what the dirt looks like. Talk about what does the pumpkin look like? What does the stem look like? What do the eyes look like? How has the mouth changed? Um, what do the sides of the container look like? Talk about all those things with them because it's a great small group. So that is four small groups or probably more plan for you throughout the year because I know a lot of us go, oh my gosh, my kids go to the science center and they don't really do anything. They just look at the stuff and they don't write, they don't draw, they don't do anything. That's because this is probably the first time your students are being asked to be observers, just like scientists, and write and draw what, draw, write and draw what they see, depending on their age, right? Um, at least draw um, what they see. But kids, our, our life is fast and everything is instant and with technology things move very very fast a lot of times especially like i'm sure when your students go to the zoo or when I, even when i take my own kids to the zoo oh there's a tiger done oh giraffe done <laughs> like they just move 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 no like kids they move they move really really fast in our life they move really really fast and technology is fast so we want to stop put this in the middle and go what do you notice what do you notice about the dirt what do you notice about the pumpkin? What do you notice about the eyes, the stem, the sides? What's happening? How has it changed? So to get them to slow down and really start to notice all the different parts and all of those details, because once you start doing this as a small group, guess what happens next time they go to the science center? They're gonna notice and slow down a little bit more. And as you do more and more observations during the year, whether it's with Pumpkin Jack, or maybe you put your fish in the middle, or maybe you put out a whole bunch of gourds one day and you're drawing the gourds and you're talking about how they feel. They're gonna go a little bit slower. They're gonna start noticing a little bit more details. Are they gonna sit and look at a gourd for an hour? No, maybe four minutes. That would be huge for um, a little three, four or five year old. Again, their attention span is what, a minute per their age? So, I mean, we just have to get them to slow down and stop and not go, oh, I'm bored, done, right? And just, just slip, go slow. Um, I do the same thing when we have butterflies in my classroom. I put the, when we have the chrysalises <laughs> or the little, um, the caterpillars, I put the jar in the middle, everybody lays on their belly and we talk for a while. What do you see? What do you notice? How are they moving? Are they not moving? Um, and we have our papers out, our just butterfly journals out and they draw what it looks like. And then once they're chrysalises, we put it in the middle of the circle. They're not doing anything, but what do they notice about the shape? Are any of them shaking? Um, do they all look the same? Do they look different? Is one bigger? Is one smaller? Does one have more bumps than the other one? And then when they turn into butterflies, we put the whole butterfly cage in the middle and we stop and we notice how is it moving? Um, how is it? I usually put like a flowered plant when we do butterflies um, in there so they have something to land on. Like, you know, those little cheap ones from like those moms from the dollar store, not the dollar store, like your little local grocery store, I'll put a plant of those in there. So that way they can land on the little flowers and move and kind of walk around on them. The kids love to watch that and observe that. So we observe the butterflies. But again, we have to slow down. We have to teach them how to observe and how to really look and notice details because everything in their world is fast and their attention span is this big. So this is a really fun one to do to help with that. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of how Pumpkin Jack works. And then um, let's say it all, so 
what, what, what will happen during the year? Again, you can go to the blog post and read all the details. And I have photographs too of a lot um, with a lot of uh, photographs of different people's pumpkin jacks at different stages. So you kind of know what to expect, know what's coming. You can kind of um, problem solve a little bit. So if yours turns to mush, some or it gets really liquidy, some people have said that they put more dirt on the top. Or once the um, pumpkin kind of gets flat, if you sprinkle a little bit of dirt on there, um, it will help the seeds kind of sprout. It's not gonna smell good when you open it. You may need to take it outside, <laughs> put on a mask, and open it, put a little bit more dirt on top, and then hopefully they will sprout. And then once they sprout in your climate, depending on where you live, it's warm enough, you can transplant them in a little pot, or maybe you plant, transplant them, them <laughs> into the little, the little seedlings um, or sprouts into your garden. Um, you can also, this one, this jar is very strong, but you can also either, once it starts growing really big, you can open the top so the students can see the plants growing. You can also cut it. So it gives them kind of more room and, the, and it gives, allows the students to really look in and see kind of what's happening, what's happening to the seedlings, all of that. Um, and then again, you transfer them outside. There's a ton of teacher, I wouldn't say a ton. I would say there's, um, there's like, I would say probably at least maybe 20 teachers from the Pocket of Preschool Facebook group. I would say that I've seen in the past like month or so say that they have pumpkins that they're using for their pumpkin jack experiment from their pumpkin jack last year. So they did the experiment, it went well, they transferred it, they now have a mini pumpkin patch at their preschool and now they're using those pumpkins for this year. Like how cool is that? They literally saw the whole life cycle um, of a pumpkin. Like that is so cool, right? That's the goal. And if it doesn't work, then you get to talk about that in your classroom too. But again, if it turns to mush, take it outside, put a little bit more dirt on it. Don't soak it. Um, that's the biggest thing, but make sure it is um, moist and you do put all of the gunk back in. Um, so yeah, so that is the pumpkin jack part. And again, all of the pumpkin jack, um, the photograph wall that you would literally put next to your pumpkin. Like I would, um, I'm gonna put it right here and sit it in the window and you can either put it above or below depending on the height so that way the students can see it because we want things at student level. You want this at their eye level or maybe I have a window right over here, I could put it over there and then this could go right under it so that way they can look and, and see all the differences um, and how it changes. You could even take their pumpkin jack experiments, put them in like a little folder and like lean it up against this so that way they're right there so you don't lose them in a pile somewhere in your classroom. Because I I mean, I'm sure that wouldn't happen to me. <laughs> yes, it would. Well, I mean, maybe. You never know. Depending on how it's going, right? Some years are crazier than others, and that's because of your students. That could be because of families. That could be because of your own personal life, your own personal kids, all the things. So let me show you a couple other things that you can do in your classroom with pumpkins and pumpkin seeds, even if you don't want to do pumpkin jack. You're like, no, nope, that's, that's extra jacky. I don't want to be that extra. You don't have to. Do what works for you, what you're comfortable with. Um, yeah. So let me, I think I have a photograph. So this is the All About Pumpkins unit. And if you're wondering how I store my science units, I put them in little, these are 12 by 12 scrapbook cases. And this one has the apples unit and the pumpkins unit both in one. There's not a lot of um, props to this one because you're gonna have real apples or use real pumpkins. So the, I put both units in one little scrapbook case. Um, and I put the unit, all the teacher pages and any printables uh, in um, little sleeves and I put on a book ring because I'm not a binder girl or guy, but if you are a binder girl or binder guy, then do binders and you can put all of it together. Um, it has a ton of teacher pages for you. Oh, there it is. Okay. And it even has like all the different science setups you can do. Super awesome. Okay. Let me see here. Okay. Here's what I wanted to show you. So I, um, again, I haven't tried pumpkin jack. I'm going to try it this year. Um, 
but this is what I did before that. So I would take pumpkin seeds, I would soak them in some water, like literally this. Ooh, spilled it. Put them at your teacher table. And um, you don't wanna do it for like 24 hours cause then they'll like soak up too much water and they'll, it won't work. But if you have them, if you soak them, you know, for, what did I say? I, before I wrote this, I tried this out. So I'm even going to read this for directions. So it says soak for at least two hours, but not more than 24. And what will happen is that we'll like make the seed coat. It'll kind of give it some water and it will start to sprout. So then what I do after I take, where's my, after they start to sprout, I take a weight, wet paper towel and I put them, so they're already kind of the um, sprouting um, or it has just softened the seed coat. And I literally just put, you know, that many in there. <laughs> and then I, um, you can either zip it closed or leave it kind of open. So that way, if you need to um, spray it with some water inside, you can. And I literally just tape this in the window. I would just tape it up there, like in the window so the kiddos can watch it and see it. Now, if you have it, okay, this has a little bit too much water. You can see it's got a little bit in there. I would probably soak some of that up because if there's too much water, it will grow mold, but you gotta kind of find that sweet spot where there's just enough water for the seeds to kind of start growing, um, but not too much where it molds. And that's gonna depend on your classroom and all of that. Um, okay, don't put it on the side that has the baggy cover. So, or you can use um, alcohol and it'll, it'll erase off if you forget and do that on accident, um, like I did. But um, what'll happen is it'll, the seeds will sprout and it'll start to grow. And the baggie is great because it, it lets students see what would normally be happening under the soil. It lets them see it in this little like seed case. And it's so cool. I usually do this every year. And then once they sprout, sprout, like where it's literally kind of growing out, I transfer it to, you would think a pot, but no, <laughs> I must have forgot the pot that day. This is just a little tub that I already had in my classroom. Again, I'm super fancy and I, I did get an orange one and I put them in there and look, I had little pumpkin seeds growing. Obviously that took a little, you know, probably, you know, a couple weeks or something, but look how cool that is. Now I live in Missouri. This usually dies in December because my room is too cold. There's not enough sunlight and it usually dies in December, January. Um, usually doesn't make it past winter break a lot, but we can talk about why, why did our pumpkin seeds die? Because it's too cold. They don't have get enough sunlight. So it's kind of a, a way for them to see that what like it's kind of a great experiment to show what um, the life cycle of a plant and they can watch it grow, but it also is great because it shows them what plants need and what happens if they don't get what they need. Sunlight, um, soil, they have the soil, but they didn't get enough sunlight. It didn't get enough um, warmth um, because my room, you know, they turn the, the heat off at night a little bit or turn it down and it would get a little chilly. And again, I'm in Missouri, so it gets very cold. <laughs> um, so yeah, but how cool is that? So, um, you can also put your seeds in a plastic cup. And what you're gonna wanna do is once, you can also, like again, I said put them in a plastic cup. So after you have them soaking in water, if you don't wanna do this, or maybe you do like half of them in, or not half of them, like 10 of them in here, take 10 of them and put them in a little, again, I'm super fancy, a plastic cup um, with dirt, and then put them in there, and then they can watch, the, you can watch them grow. And then again, if you use the clear, clear cup and hopefully one will grow by the edge, they can see the roots growing down because again, it's clear, which is awesome. Um, but you're gonna want to um, measure the growth. Now, if you're anything like me, you're gonna forget what day you planted them. So you can little, put a little calendar on your, um, like a, uh, planted pumpkins um, on your like, monthly calendar and hopefully by the end of the month or when you change your calendar out for the month, write it in your plan book, what day you planted them. Because as you can see, this is all based off students. 
they wanted to measure it at different times. So that's what they did. And again, I laminated this. We used um, a Sharpie, but just color it with the dry erase marker and it will erase and then you will have a brand new one. But you're thinking, my kids can't measure by with rulers. Yes, they can. Let me show you my rainbow ruler. Does it have to be a rainbow? No, it just has to probably be two or three colors because all they're gonna do is they are going to like, they're gonna, oh, well, here, I'll measure this pumpkin with it. All they're gonna do is count the color blocks. One, two, three. This pumpkin is three big, but look, each color block is an inch. So they can go, it's one, two, three inches. So they're using a ruler, so they're starting to learn how to use the ruler to measure, but they're not reading the numbers. They are just counting the color blocks. So it's kind of a mix of non-standard measurement meets measurement because they're using a real form of measurement, but it's, it's, it's in a preschool way. It's in a way that's appropriate for them. And um, families will be very impressed when they say, oh, this is three inches big and it's accurate-ish. So how cool is that? So. Maybe you don't, you're like, no, I don't like this. I got you. You make a bean ruler. I have directions on how to make these on my blog. You take 10 beans and you put them in the middle of some plastic tape, fold it over, and then I usually put another piece on and fold it over again. Write the numbers on there, and then you have a bean ruler. So this is another great way to, to for them to practice non-standard measurement in a real and meaningful and purposeful way so they can measure the pumpkin. It's one, two, three, four big. Okay, or maybe then they can measure this one. But again, have them measure, hold on, let me go back. Have them measure your pumpkin seeds. Okay, so wherever you have your pumpkin seeds, we're gonna pretend this is a tray of dirt or a bucket because you know, I used a plastic bucket that I already had in my classroom. Again, you don't have to always go out and buy new stuff. You can put both of these there. You can have one of them out for that uses your ruler, one that uses the bean ruler. Put one out next to it, whatever. And put your little cup of, of uh, pumpkin and then put that next to it. Or you can also, this is just a book holder. Put this there with the ruler next to your plant and now they can measure and it's also a visual for them to go oh have we measured the plant yet oh I can measure and even if they don't write it down they're still practicing that non-standard measurement now once pumpkin jack starts to grow print off another one of these this is in my science pack Sorry. this isn't in pumpkin jack I can add one to it though um have put this the pumpkin jack, get a chart, and then they can measure the sprouts or um, the seedlings as they um, as they start to grow. So, yeah. um, and if you're wondering where I got these, when I was in college, I worked retail and I waited tables all the time. Um, this was from a store that was going out of business that I worked at. It wasn't my fault; it was going out of business. The whole the whole chain went out of business, but I, I um, bought like a box of these or something, but you can buy them from Amazon. You can also go to the um, like Dollar Tree and buy um, like a book holder or any kind of um, little holder in the photo aisle. That works perfect for that too. And it might even be prettier than that. So now you can measure either if you're doing a plant or if you're doing Penguin Jack. So. That is so fun. And let's say you're growing the pumpkins. You can also take this. I can't see it. Oh, no. See it? You can also put it back in there with, and again, we're going to pretend this is our dirt. And they can put it back there and they can be ready to measure it whenever um, it starts growing. How cool is that? And then you're going to have your pumpkin jack with your chart. And then you're going to have this all year. And I know a lot of um, people, and including, I, I also think this, that you need to have something alive or something growing in your classroom at all times, whether that is a betta fish. I, I, I like betta fish because they're, they're hardy <laughs> um, and they're easy. 
or um, uh, spider plants are also great, but this would also be great too, to have as your um, addition to your science center to watch something grow and change over time. And I know a lot of us have to have something that meets that objective in our science center. So this will work for that, even if it fails. <laughs> Once it fails, then you can obviously get rid of it, but you could put it, a spider plant is always my go-to because they're great, but this will um, work for that standard too if you need to have that in your classroom. So again, all of the pumpkin jack freebies, all of these along with detailed directions and labels and all the things like, um, you can put this again on the bottom so parents know you're not, or on the label, so, you know, families um, coming in the classroom don't think you're just growing mold. <laughs> they know what you're doing. Um, so yeah, those are all in there. And then, oh, I wanted to show you one more thing in the science unit that is included. So this is um, an investigation chart. So you get all the pieces. So I typically would do this with my class. When we would open the pumpkin, we would make an anchor chart. Let me find all the pieces. Here it is. I keep all of my anchor chart pieces in a plastic bag because I usually laminate the pieces so I can use them again the next year. Scoot this. Okay, so we've got our pumpkin investigation at the top of our anchor chart and then I usually have the inside and then they tell me what it look, or sorry, we do the outside first and they tell me what it looks like and I write it down on my anchor chart and then we open it up. Oh, sorry. And then we measure it. So then I measure it and we measure and I draw it. So then it'll be like, and we can, you can, again, you can use cubes, whatever you want to use to measure. So then you can, they can, there it is right there. Draw it and then you can measure it and then you can open it and then you can write what they tell you, what the inside looks like or what um, you can do feels like too if you want. And then there's also, oh, I picked up the wrong one, how many seeds. So I know you're thinking my preschoolers or maybe you get one with a lot of seeds can't count that high. This is what I did one year. I literally put tape on the top of my sensory table, cause it was um, a plastic lid and it was easy to clean. So I put tape on it and the students just lined up all the seeds on, on the line. And then um, I had one of my pre-K friends, we count to 10 and then he would group them, count to 10 and they would group them. So we did that for a small group and then we counted, I counted or I counted by 10s, so they kind of watched me and we counted how many there were because sometimes there are a lot, but it also includes this for your chart. So under how many seeds, you can write how many, but you can all, you can also fill in the 10 frames so that way they can visually see how many that is. So if you have, this one was 72, so that way they can visually see how big 72 is because 72 probably doesn't mean a lot to them. There is also a worksheet of this anchor chart. And again, I usually do that when I'm opening up this guy. So that would probably go with your pumpkin jack experiment if you want to. And again, I use um, Sharpie for this, but use dry erase. And then it comes off and then look, you just peel it off and put it in your baggie. And now you have your anchor chart ready to go for next year. You don't have to print, you don't have to laminate, you don't have to do anything, you just tape it to your anchor chart and now you have student made or um, student, obviously they're not doing the ones writing, but those are their thoughts and ideas on that anchor chart because we want the chart star room to be representative of them, their ideas, their thoughts, and their thinking. So, yes. So I hope you, oh, let me show you the science center setup since I have it here. So this is just one option you could have. Now I would have my strands in here. We're gonna pretend, right? And you could also have some pumpkin on there too. You could have a scale. There's some um, more ideas on there. You have your strands, your pumpkin plant that you're growing, seeds, gourds, um, and some pumpkins with a magnifying glass and some paper. 
Um, I do have a whole video on everything that's included in my science unit. If you want to grab it, it's one of the top 10 sellers in my store. So I know this is a good one. It's like you will literally use it every year, probably always even some part of it. And oh, there's even like parent notes or family notes to send home um, with them as well. So that way families know what you're doing in the classroom. All right. Oh, and you could even put that guy. So, oh, and then we have all of the, um, the real vocabulary cards with real photographs at the top as well. And there are, again, there's more in this unit than what I showed you. So I'll um, plop in the video of the whole science unit, um, where the links are. So you can see that if you want to check that out too. So I hope you guys try Pumpkin Jack. If you try it, make sure to post it and tag me or post it in the Pocket or Preschool Facebook group. We will cheer you on. We will cheer your pumpkin on from afar or your Pumpkin Jack. We will all be cheering each other on. Um, if there's something you discover about this experiment that you want to share with everybody, make sure you pop in the group and share. You can share with me. I hope you guys have an amazing day or night, depending on when you're watching. Again, if you try this out or even do the, just grow the seeds or try that in your classroom, make sure to tag me. I love to see what's going on in your classrooms. And if you want a pat on the back, pop it in the pack at every school Facebook group because we cheer each other on and we are huge supporters of each other there. Um, so, because you guys work hard and you do so much for your students and I know you don't get enough recognition. Um, so we hopefully um, are there for each other and we can at least cheer each other on and say, that's awesome, way to go, love it, tell me more, all the things. Um, so yeah. All right, so you have an amazing time and if you need to rewatch this, it will be posted um, to the YouTube channel and, um, within the next couple days. So can we watch it this year again? And then if you're like, Oh, I want to do this next year, you can go back and you can find it again and watch it next year. Um, or maybe you don't want to do it this year, but you'd want to do it next year. Again, it'll be, um, on YouTube forever. So, um, you guys have an amazing night and I will talk to you soon. Bye.